My name is Leanne Hushfield, and I teach students. The topics I teach are eighth grade science. Um, I teach ESL, pre-AP, on level. Um, and I also teach a GT class, which are seventh graders who are taking eighth grade curriculum. And I teach here at Apollo Junior High. When I was a little girl, I hated school. I hated going to school. And I found it just a super negative experience. My mom thought I was being stubborn uh, with not reading. We've come to find out now I'm both letter and number dyslexic. So I have a severe dyslexia um, learning disability. And so I didn't learn to read till third grade. But back in the 60s, when you were starting school, people didn't know learning disabilities. They didn't understand them. Teachers were not supportive then. Things were different in education. So when I was little, my parents wanted to find things that I was good at and that I could be excited about. So they bought me a microscope for my seventh birthday. And all of a sudden, a whole new world opened up to me. And I loved science. And my, I think my dad had that, he was an electrical engineer, and I think he had that intuition because I was always asking him what he was doing and why he was doing it. And he called me the question kid. I mean, I just was fascinated by how things worked. Like what a fly's eyeball looks like. I mean, it's crazy underneath the microscope. And that's what I really love about doing that with my students. And to me, biology is, very easy way to start because it's what you see when you walk out your door. Even though I was considered a low performing student as an overall basis, I went into honor science starting in high school. And that was because I love science. That's my background, I'm a biology major. I was a nurse at Children's Hospital, got my master's in uh, education, and then started working towards my doctorate. I teach astrophysics for Oklahoma State University. I mean, to think that I'm doing very complex math problems today is just a crazy thing. I want people to understand that you can see the impossible and can accomplish the impossible. I have to honor who they are um, when they walk through my door that very first day of school. And it's hard being a teenager. It's hard being in middle school. I have a young man who works a full-time job and um, in addition to going to school, and he's responsible for his siblings, and he's responsible for buying clothing and food and uh, school supplies. And I think the students really understand that I care, number one, about who they are. I care about where they're going and who they're gonna be someday. And the students get it. Um, am I tough? Yes. Uh, do I expect a lot? Absolutely. Uh, do I have a high bar that I expect you to reach? Absolutely I do. I expect your best all the time. But with that, I'm willing to help scaffold you to get to your best and help you to become who you can be. We have a procedure for everything when you come into my class to when you walk out of my class. And so that also gives them a very safe zone. Kids need that structure, especially I think in junior high. They need consistency. Kids want to come to my tutoring and they want to come because it's very purposeful. I'm not asking you to come in and rewrite a test question and tell me why it's wrong. We're having a conversation about what's going on with that test question and where you were. Failure is not an option. Every kid needs to cross that finish line um, at the end of the year and needs to understand, first of all, what they know, what they don't know, and how to advocate for themselves so that when they go to high school, they can continue the advocacy process. So those meaningful conversations that I have with them in the afternoons after school when they come by and we spend five to 10 minutes together talking about a teak they don't know opens up so much more than just that teak. It opens up how you can learn and be more effective in your learning. That's how I do tutoring. That kind of goes back to my own process and how I had to learn how to learn. So I think that goes back to that. So that's why I stay inspired.